Now, women are considered these days to have been liberated. Like, for example, they no longer have to, you know, give up work when they're married. You know, have to be stay-at-home uh, mothers. They're they're now in control of their uh, sex lives. You know, marital rape is is no longer uh, tolerated. But uh, what's the uh, reality? I mean, has women's happiness improved over the past fifty years? Well, of course, this is the funny thing that women's happiness, if you look at the research, the habit, women's happiness is actually de decreasing. Um, but I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not one to say women were better off in the 1950s. I don't think they were. I think the choices that are available for women are fabulous. Uh, we've, we've got options that we never had before. And many of us have benefited enormously from that. I mean, certainly my life has been blessed by having the opportunity to have children and also work throughout my life and do really fulfilling work and doing things that I wouldn't people in previous generations wouldn't have been allowed to do and having very different relationships with the men in my life from the you know more equal relationships and I think that is important that you know that women don't have to defer to men and women can be part of the decision making in the family and so on um so you know, I'd be the first to applaud the good things about women's liberation. I was a feminist, in my, you know, for many years. It's only very recently I've stopped calling myself a feminist um, because I believed in equality between men and women. And I think we've achieved that, um, no question, in lots of areas. And it really bothers me that now the feminist movement has decided to go well beyond that into grinding men into the dirt. They're not interested in equality. They're interested in disadvantaging men in every conceivable area of their lives. And that's not why I became a feminist. Um, and so but going back to my question, the, your original question, I think it's a very complex issue of why women are unhappy. I think a lot of it's to do with totally unrealistic expectations. They've been given about their lives, the assumption that they, you know, that they can... Um, easily combine raising children and looking after children with having a career. It's, it's just the fact that it, it's, it's not so easy. There's no question that children, many children are being denied the, the care they need by being put into long hours of childcare from a very early age. I've done a lot of work on that and writing about that. And too many children are getting minimalist parenting as a result of being brought up in two career families. There has to be some slack in the system. It could be a man or a woman, but you can't have two brain surgeons in the family. And, and you know, women somehow don't, you know, that, that's a very difficult thing to negotiate in a relationship. Who is it who's going to put the extra time and care into being there for the kids? Uh, and clearly that's something, one of the, the great areas of tension for women. And they would argue, why is it an area of tension for men too? Um, I think it is, but in a different way. I think there are lots of men who would like more flexibility in terms of being there for their children. Uh, but often they're the ones earning the greater incomes and the mortgage is dependent on what they do and they think they're doing the right things for their family in continuing to work really hard to, to support that family. And they discover, of course, when they get divorced, that none of that counts at all in terms of contact with their kids. Um, so it's complex. Um, and, uh, but I think there are lots of reasons why women are discovering it's extremely difficult to get it right. And probably the most important one is that they are endlessly disappointed in their relationships because they have a totally unrealistic view of what they can get from this one person there, the man they choose to share their lives with. And men just can't come up to, to scratch. It's just impossible to give women what they want. Well, one of the things I've seen you comment on quite a bit is the uh, prominence of uh, single women in their 30s now, professional uh, women who who can't find a man. And it's uh, there's endless... Um, uh, f uh, female lifestyle websites commenting on this uh, probably you know Bridget Jones is the embodiment of uh, this problem uh, how is this uh, fi uh, how would you say this can be fixed or how can how can this be um, uh, amended 
Well, I think it's really problematic because what we've got there is the consequence of women making the decision, mainly women, I think, making the decision to delay marriage. And we, we, we used to get married until we were in our early 20s. Now most women, most men and women don't decide to settle down until their late t- 20s. And it just gives, it gives men all the choice. I mean, if you all, get, all partner up in your early 20s, as I said earlier, there's, you know, there's this idea that there's probably going to be someone for everybody pretty much. But leave men out there into their 30s and they could choose to partner women much younger than them. You know, the professional men could choose to partner up with less qualified women. Uh, so the 35-year-old lawyer who wants another 35-year-old lawyer or a man who's equally successful as she is uh, – is fishing in a very sparsely, um, a very sparse pool of professional men who have all the choices in the world, and she's hopping mad because a lot of those men aren't interested in her. But how, who could blame them? I mean, you know, I think if I was a 39-year-old professional man, I would be thinking about a considerably younger woman because the whole pressure around quickly deciding whether you want to partner up quickly deciding whether you want to have children can, you know, just be really killing for a relationship. You want a bit of time and to, to sort out whether you're, you're right for each other um, rather than, you know, partnering up and immediately getting into the panic of do we start IVF today, you know. I think all of that is extremely hard. I have clients who are in their, women who are in their 30s and they're some of my diff- most difficult clients because they're really facing those issues. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.